Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. Today, lesson 13, we're going to be taking a look at how to do reporting within a microservices ecosystem. So because microservices is a highly distributed environment where we form a bounded context, meaning that all of the functionality, the business rules, the data, and the business domain are all owned by that bounded context, in other words, by that microservice. Necessarily, with microservices, what we do is we distribute our data. So this looks great from an operational or a transactional standpoint, but what about reporting? Let me show you three different patterns of doing reporting within microservices, because where does the data reside in a microservices ecosystem? Well, of course, it resides in each individual schema or each individual database. So the point is for the database pool model, what we say is, well, if the data is in the database, from a reporting perspective, just go and grab the data. We can do aggregations and stuff like this and get our reports. But if we analyze this, what we find out is while this is fairly obvious and intuitive and unfortunately a fairly common practice, we realize is it breaks every bounded context because now I no longer own my data. I can't change my schema or modify my schema without impacting reporting. And so this model certainly, while it seems kind of attractive because it is the source of record, doesn't really work well. Well, to preserve the bounded context, what's really our only choice? Well, we can ask for the data, and that's the HTTP pull model. So in this case, the reporting service or reporting services simply, instead of getting the data directly, ask each microservice for its data. And so you can kind of see if I have reporting, I'm making these HTTP or these RESTful calls and getting the data. However, if we analyze this, we can see that we're actually preserving the bounded context, which is a good thing. However, the first thing we have are performance issues. And as a matter of fact, this is just simply going to time out, especially aggregating across multiple microservices. The second issue we have is of data volume. Get a list of all trades placed this year. Boom. Through REST. Mm, there's too much data volume. And so this model starts to fall apart. Well, we kind of have a problem with reporting in microservices ecosystems, don't we? Because we split apart the database. And the problem is we still need to aggregate across those databases. Either we get the data or we ask for it. Is there another option? And in fact, there is. And it's called an event-based push model. Now, notice what I did here. I changed the topology to where we now have reporting services, but we have a reporting database as well. And so we have these data capture services, which could be bound to a specific microservice. They could be bound to a domain, which is mostly typical. But here's what happens. Now watch this. As each microservice gets data of concern, it pushes that data out asynchronously to event, which is then captured by these services. And this is called a data pump. In other words, I'm pumping out data. These data capture services are receiving that data, doing a map reduce or some sort of filtering or aggregation, and then inserting that data in the reporting service so that we have very quick access to that data from a reporting perspective. And as a matter of fact, if we analyze this kind of event-based push model or this data pumps, and as a matter of fact, isn't it interesting? The prior two models were called a pull model. In other words, I'm going to pull model, pull information from you. Whereas this kind of model for reporting is more of a push. I'm going to push the data out to you and you do whatever you want to with it. It forms a tight or a loose coupling between the microservices and the reporting because I have a different contract in those events than I do in my data schema. And what it allows me to do is to be able to evolve my data schema separately from these events or these data pumps. And then through versioning, I can then start slowly or incrementally updating these events. But if we analyze this, we find that I do preserve the bounded context. 
In other words, the data capture services are not listening to the particular, not talking directly to the data. Um, the furthermore, I do have nice data timeliness. I'm not relying on any sort of latency when I do reporting. Now, you might argue that there is latency going down to the data capture service through these events. And granted, yes, there is probably anywhere from 50 to 100 milliseconds of latency before it actually gets into a reporting database. But the point is that's usually within seconds. And third, I've got this filtering capability within these data capture services so that now the microservices blindly pump out all of the data that I have inserted or updated or deleted. And now the data capture service is bound to that reporting service to determine whether it's really needed through filtering and also then to aggregate into a form that the reporting service can actually use. Overall, with reporting, this becomes a big challenge with microservices, something that, at least in my experience in the field, has become somewhat of an afterthought. But once you start distributing data, this has become, in my opinion, at least one of the most effective ways of dealing with reporting. And as a matter of fact, if we kind of analyze what's going on here with these reporting, <clears throat> the database pool model, as we see, minimizes on that bounded context. In other words, we break the count bounded context, but we have a good timeliness of data. So that data consistency, in other words, it I am accessing the system of record. But with the HTT pool, we maximize that bounded context. We preserve that important bounded context, but we don't have a very good timeliness of data due to the fact that we're always going to time out. But watch this event push. The push model maximizes on both bounded context and timeliness of data, therefore really giving us both of these kind of attributes. So this has been Software Architecture Monday, Lesson 13, Microservices and Reporting. Just a couple of tips in terms of a topology for dealing with reporting within microservices. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Please stay tuned every Monday for the next architecture lesson, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you so much.